the great thing about these layers is that they are layers and all the participants on the internet conform to those layers and it means that we can all communicate with each other. Now if you look at the, the next layer, the identity layer, well, I suppose you could say there is a layer. The problem is it's a fragmented layer. It's a layer of many different solutions. There is no one single defined identity layer for the internet. And that's one of the things which is making the internet a very insecure and uh, um, dangerous place, possibly, to be. Every website goes and rolls its own form of asking for your identity credentials. Typically they'll ask for a username and a password, but the way that they ask for them, the, the look of the page, the, the actual look of the web pages, every single web page that asks for a username and, and password looks different. I mean, look at all these pages. They're all looking for usernames and passwords. Somewhere on each of these pages is a username and a password being asked for, and each one of them presents the user with an entirely different experience. Okay, the extremities of the experience, the web browser, are the same, but the actual bit they're interacting with, the web page itself, every one of them is a different web page. So we can say there's no consistency about the login experience for users. And that's a problem. That's a really big problem. Because it means we've taught users to type their usernames and passwords into just about any web page they see. Now that's a problem. It's a problem which has led to the rise of the phishing phenomenon. Setting up web pages like I showed you earlier, www.identitytheft.com, making them look like something else, and having users type their secrets into them. And then obviously those secrets are then stolen and used against them. So this brings us to a set of uh, laws, um, a little bit like the laws of physics or the laws of gravity, um, called the seven laws of identity. They've been created mostly by an architect called Kim Cameron, but um, he is a very inclusive sort of individual and has garnered a lot of uh, input and support from well-known identity um, figures in the industry. And a lot of people have had a, a lot of say over what these laws are. But the laws are user control and consent. So in any identity interaction, the user should be in control of what happens and should consent to the release of identity information. The idea of minimal disclosure for a defined use. So, for example, if... Um, if I'm going to a website and they're going to deliver something to me, there's really no need for them to know what my date of birth is, as an example. So the website I'm going to requires me to um, give them some information, but really they should only be asking for the minimal amount of information for the use that is defined. And if that's delivering a product to my address, then all they really need is my name and address. The law of justifiable parties. Um, yeah, when Microsoft was introducing a system known as Microsoft Passport, um, a lot of people started to say, hang on a second, why is it that Microsoft is involved in an interaction between me, my credit card company, and the hotel I'm about to book? Because there were a number of hotel chains that um, allowed you to use your passport account on their site. You could use your passport account to log into Hilton Hotels, for example. The Hilton Honours, uh, maybe not Honours, I can't remember, but certainly Hilton Hotels. Um, well, you can see that, you know, somebody may have uh, a reason to say, what on earth is the justification for Microsoft being involved in that transaction? Um, so the idea of the parties in an interaction having a justifiable reason to be there. The idea of directional identity. Um, one way of describing this is to say um, some of the new passports, um, they have near-field communication chips in them. And they, um, they are detectable from a range of, depending on the equipment, maybe 10 meters away. So if we imagine uh, something like an American citizen walking with a passport in his pocket within 10 meters of a terrorist bomb aimed at Americans, then that's an, uh, that's an example of omnidirectional identity. In fact, it's, a, it's, it's an example of where identity has, has really gone wrong, where, where something has gone wrong, where something which is broadcasting something about you really 
almost without your control and consent. Really, the only way you could control and consent to the release of that information is to always carry your passport in a lead, um, a lead cover. So directional identity, the direction in which identity is issued and used is quite important. And the reason it's important is because the identity that you use on one website and the identity that you might use on another website may be different. However, if those two websites collude with each other, maybe they can put a picture together which shows that you are one and the same person. So an identity system which doesn't take account of directional identity is uh, at a disadvantage. We then have the idea of pluralism of operators and technologies. The idea that we all, we all are familiar. If we look into our wallets and our purses, we will find lots of cards in them. If I look in mine now, I've got a frequent flyer card. Well, I've got several frequent flyer cards, several hotel membership cards. I've got a number of credit cards. I've got a video rental card. I've got a card which was issued by my government, a government gateway card. And each one of these cards represents my relationship with a provider of uh, an operator of an identity system. So when I want to spend my frequent flyer miles, I use my frequent flyer card. When I want to buy something off a website, I use my credit card. When I want to rent a video, I use my video rental card. Each, each one of those is a separate operator. They have their own different systems, they have their own platforms, they have their own technologies. So we're all very familiar with the idea of compartmentalizing our lives into different identities which have a context for specific use. You can't use your frequent flyer card to buy products off Google, off, off Amazon, for example. So any identity system which is out there must allow for the fact that there will be multiple operators providing identity information and they will be using multiple technologies. Human integration often tell the story of um, the the idea that when a group of people go away on a conference typically they'll meet in the hotel bar immediately after the conference or maybe they go and have a shower first meet in the hotel bar then they go and have dinner and then they usually move on to um, a bar or a pub somewhere else and that might lead on to another one and another one and depending on how um, how adventurous the individuals are depends on how late that goes on into the night but, um, you know, when you come out of one of those bars, um, you may have no idea how on earth you got there. And you may find yourself in um, a place which is a bit on the dodgy side, a bit... Uh, there, are, there are clues that are given to you as a human being that you're in a dangerous situation. It's dark, there are no lights, um, lots of the windows around you have been smashed, lots of the cars seem to have been set on fire at some stage or other. And how on earth did you end up in this situation, you don't know, but that's where you are. And how are you going to get out of it? What something has given you a clue that you're in a dangerous situation, it would be a good idea to get out of that situation as quickly as possible. Um, that kind of human integration into the world, into the experience, doesn't exist on the internet. It's very easy to fool somebody who's in a dangerous position on the internet that they're in a completely safe place. To con them, it's the con man's trick. And this is what phishing, what phishing sites do. So we need to have an identity system that people can use on the internet which will give them those clues in the same way that if you were in a street with um, um, cars with broken windows, darkness, groups of youths hanging around on the street that this is a potentially dangerous situation. The identity systems that we use on the internet need to give us exactly the same types of cues somehow.